Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Hearts of Iron for, with the TNO, the Last Days of Europe mod, and which we're playing with Toolbox Theory Unfinished Business, also known as Toolbox Theory 3. Finally, the mod is updated and we're playing as the United States of America, hopefully trying to get the President Heart campaign. Um, so with this campaign, we're going to be skipping around maybe a little bit. We might read some new events and whatnot. I'm not exactly sure what's new, except there's generally been somewhat of a re not really rework but just some touches up in america and we'll see what happens as well just because i have not played tno at the time of recording for so long that i don't remember a whole lot about it but we have some new things here um but not everything is new with the american mallies but a problem of logistics Admiral Thomas H. Moore and the planning staff at the Indian Ocean Command wearily eyed the maps played across the with the lines borders outlining the nations of Southeast Asia, from the vast Indonesian archipelago to the jungles of Indian China. Yet for the moment, all eyes were focused on Malay and the task of supplying the rebels on the peninsula. Unless the rebels can secure a port, we can't do much, one of the lieutenants bluntly stated. Thank you, officer, for pointing out the obvious. One commander snapped back, but we're not in the business of the impossible. We have the perch, an old balo, balao, converted for transport duties available. We might be able to Shanghai the sea line from the Sh Atlantic too. Another officer replied, it won't be much, but it's better than nothing. Ceylon ventured a third, pointing at the map. Access, uh, access to the base at Trincomalee it will be a boom for ability to reach Southeast Asia. Not have to go to the State Department, the commander replied, don't count on it. How about the MAC here, left command? We can try running C-130s out to the Cocos Islands and use tankers to refuel them midway. I'll have to talk to Air Force about that more and interject. We're going to have to do a few trial runs first, but I agree with the lieutenant until the rebels can get their hands on a port. Our hands are tied. So right now, with this update, of course we have global, global conflicts, which always happens. Um, we get 1.75 political power, which is pretty decent. But we also have smoke and mirrors. I and mean, it talks about the Republican Party and how it's a coalition with the Democratic Party. Barry Goldwater is the leader of the hardline Republicans who stand for freedom via unrestrained government. Um, and we have faction health and coalition support, my God. And then we have Rockefeller, uh, really are other responsible Republicans. Um, so, and then we have Lyndon Baines Johnson, Jumbo here, who is a leader of the Labor Democrats, for new, who, who is an advocate for New Deal liberalism, and Richard Russell Jr., leader of the Dixocrats, who argues for the interests of the South. So, And the odd couple coalition of the R&D parties have rapidly become a fixture of American politics since its creation in the late 50s. There's also from two beleaguered political establishments keen to preserve the power base, or power in the face of the surging political instability. And so they only lose ground. The Alliance of Elephants and, and Booties run on horse trading and backroom dealings in smoke room rooms uh, to ensure that the wings of the two constituent parties remain satisfied, a gauntlet spanning conservative Republicans to astonish new dealers and mercurial southerners changing as factions rise and fall within the national, national mood. The Phil promises a popular legislation and Palms agrees with the poor and political capital of a successful presidency will be key to keeping the already coalition in lockstep, Phil uh, at risk of this nation's very stability. So, um, to get President Philip, though, we're actually going to try to get Wallace, so we will destroy the RDs for a little bit and then uh, see where we go from there. So, that is the plan at the very moment. Um, I don't think this really changed at all, but I can still read these, I suppose. Um, I think I read this, but this is exactly the same, perhaps, so. Um, if you want to read this, please go right ahead. And then, but on like Hercules. Yeah, so. Just in case. I mean, I've, I've, it's been so long since I've actually read any of these in the subcontinent. Um, so if you're this one as well, please go ahead. And the missile crisis, if you like to read about this one, please go ahead as well. We saved it off midnight for now, which is nice. Um, so, the end of the missile crisis, that's pretty normal. Indian subcontinent, of course, like normal. And recognize the Republic of India. Um, yeah, if you want to read this again, please go right ahead as well. But we'll see what happens um, with that one. Uh, give them our arms. That wouldn't be bad to do. Um, so, you're going to read this one too. Please go right ahead. And then add our money. And the start of something beautiful as well. Casting off, with a compass in hand and butterflies in his stomach, he gazed off towards the visage of Anchorage, rapidly shrinking away onto the horizon. A game of cards and a hearty serving of alcohol had certainly done wonders to feed his excitement and wanderlust while they were docked in port, but he had to admit, it was hard to get the yesterday's goodbyes out of his mind. His mother's reaction not surprised him, but quiet about sobbing in a laundry list of demands as they stood before the front door. She had been nervous for weeks, and in all that time he had done his best to reassure her. This was something he needed to do. He would take all available precautions, with all the necessary documents, it was a conversation that seemed to never end. No. It would resolve any lingering strife with his mom. It wasn't her that was spawning such remorse in his sea-bound heart. Surprisingly, it was Dab. To say his father was an enigma would be an understatement. Childhood memories existed beyond Khan, missed baseball games, absent birthday parties, one-word responses to kindergarten art pieces. 
It wasn't that his dad didn't care at all, per se. From time to time, he would show his affection, teach his sons or place a flat tire to The problem was consistency. Or there, the lack of. At any moment, dad might disappear into the basement again, or would Carl pull out of the driveway and return home, or return hours after the family dinner had ended. He never knew what to make of it. Perhaps the war had simply taken too large a toll, created a man who could simply have only functional whiskey and lonesome hours. Hmm. So when dad burst into tears in front of the taxi, launched into a bear hug, and handed his son a compass and his pistol suddenly before the car door closed, it could help but feel shaken. Was he really going to make the right decision if it could affect such a man that was so great? Uh, ultimately, he brushed the thought away and returned below deck. There was no turning back now, and a great and exciting adventure to lay out before him. He would return alive and ultimately change for the better. Time to find out what else there is an echoing crisis. Also, or echoing cries. And if I end up like reading things I've read before, but I apologize, but you know, I've not read this for quite a long time. As you know, we've been able to secure access to a port. Let's break through now and now allow us to get us some actual American boys on the ground over there. Davis took a map off the table in front of him and pinned it down the walls. As you can see, there are some pain in the butt to follow, but it proved to be even larger pain in the butt to actually travel through, but as we've but alas, we have to be as careful as possible to avoid interception by the AJN or the Sukarno's stuff his nose into the matter. Or have him stuff his nose into the matter. Now, why grin encompassed Davis's face? And he was gleeful at the fact that American boots were finally going to march into Asia to challenge the supremacy of those imperialist Japanese maniacs, you know. Do you know how he. What was that your name again? I'm glad we can help you in this battle. The Japanese have blood of my own life. Those effing dudes stole my children and my wife back in Hawaii. They took everything I treasured so deeply and just ripped them straight from my very hands. Davis's smile faded and his eyes flooded with tears. He might not have accompanied them on the fateful day yet. The screams and cries of poor Marissa and Jack as they, along with their weeping mother, punted their last breaths of air and continued to haunt him. His brain even had betrayed him when he first thought of to imagine their face. I had one child. I had one child, I mean. He always used to play on the dirt and was always a bundle of joy. Um, <clears throat> one day, back when those Cretans first stormed the place, had been playing out in the mud as usual. I and my wife, Halima, I uh, had tried to get him back inside, but he refused, and when the Japanese showed up, he asked for a soldier to play with him. The soldier did not even take a second to think before shooting him in the cold blood, and I was left frozen in the window, unable to muster the bravery to confront the killer, staring on as the soul departed his body and his blood stained in the ground. The, two, the room was silent, and empty of the usual grunting of soldiers, the only disturbance being the chirping of crickets. There in the muted hall sat the two men collapsed into each other's embrace and weeping a river with their guns in hand. They will avenge their loved ones, even if it means their own lives. So now, can we at least send... How many guys can we, can we send? That's a good question to ask. Uh, two divisions, so which two? Oh, you have way too many guys with you, don't you? Um, you are... I can, uh, there you go, let's do that real quick. Do this, thank you, and we'll send you with this guy. You that as well. Uh, honestly, probably just sending these guys. They're only 14 combos, which is, you know, it's alright. But we'll see what we can do about these guys. Yep. Army 3, yes please. Oh, Maxwell Taylor, do, 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 do. Thank you. All right, so oh, there's airbase right here too. We send one wing of them. Oh my god, I forgot to edit this crap. <clears throat> all right, get rid of all these planes in. I there was so much. No, maybe not so much, but there was quite a bit to do before I even started recording. Look at all these planes. I mean, it's important that we should have them. Why not too? But like, things cost money, man. I haven't deleted the navy either, just because we might need it. So, improved drop fighter, huh? Early cast, jet cast, that's fine. Go with that for now. Scary fighters, that's nice. Oh, great ambitions. Kenny to refocus his eyes and try his best to keep a small bride, not as an easy task. Wow. Shaking the hand of a man with a grip of iron and a nerve of steel it certainly made it more difficult than dozens of cameras flashing around both of them. Well, the notion of the OFN aid to a rebellion in the sphere wasn't considered impossible. There were a particular nature of Malaysia, or Malaya, was always a tricky deal to get anyone outside of the states involved. It was, as the last of the president's cam cameras flickered in front of JFK and Antun Abdul al Razak, the pair could finally take a seat and walk, talk over America's involvement in Malaya. Razak was speaking before he even sat down, Mr. Vice President. We both know that the OFN needs a firm position in the Pacific. And now that Alina should push, should push come to show, if you wish to, would you send some more supplies our way? Kennedy grimaced and spoke up. We're doing everything we can with our airdrops. We're pushing our luck as is. It's, if so much as another gun passes into Malaya, the Japanese will catch you in. We'll have a whole new situation on our hands. Tun's eyebrows narrowed. It locked his fingers together. Nothing you couldn't handle, though, right? Kennedy smirked and took a sip of water. I'm serious, Tun continued. We both know what your next step is, one way or another. It's a chance to redeem America's position in the cause of worldwide freedom. It's not like President Nixon is exactly hurting those chances with how he's managed your country and how you've handled the Japanese before. I'm certain you'll be on the chief's seat in no time. Kennedy took a moment to think about Tun's words. Maybe we can give a little more to Malaya. I hate to see every, anyone's culture ground up to nothing, after all, but don't count on anything more than what you're already getting. I'm running by the president. And see what he thinks. Just don't count on it. Nice. Um, oh, oh, these are carrier fighters. Well, okay. Yeah. 
three or five. There's no other uh, difference. Ah, I see. Maybe, yeah. Duh. Duh. And we'll see where we end up. So, uh, smokes and mirrors. We have more political power, but we want to save some PP. It's always important to save some PP. Can we search anything? No, we cannot. Um, I'm not even gonna touch this. So, oh, we must maintain three percent GDP growth. Or the mission will fail. Hmm. Budget is plus. Well, with the budget currently, we have a deficit. It's pretty normal. We lower everything for the army expenditures, navy, and I haven't gotten rid of the navy yet, but still. We need, we need more money. Assassin strikes this guy. Oh, if you wondered about that, please go ahead. That's pretty normal. So as one eagle falls, another one rises. So there you go. All right. Oh. oh. I thought that they were encircled at first. I'm like, oh god, that's not good. Ah, uh, MLJ Jr. speech. MLK Jr. speech. I say to you, my friends, that in spite of the difficulties and frustrations of the moment, I still have a dream. It's a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day the nation will rise up and live out the tree, true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I have a dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the form, sons of former slave owners will be able to sit down together at a table of brotherhood. I have a dream that one day even the state of Mississippi, a desert state, sweltering with the heat of injustice and oppression, will be transformed into oasis of freedom and justice. I have a dream that my four children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of the character. I have a dream today. On the steps of the Lincoln Memorial, prominent civil rights leader M. L. K. Jr. gave a speech to a and grand crowd of over a quarter million people. As words have already spread across the country like wildfires, men, women, black and white uh, uh, spread a new slogan. I have a dream. Time for actions new. Time for actions now. Oh boy. Well, we want. We need to go. Our, uh, NPP. So one flew over the cuckoo's nest. Cuckoo's nest. I think I heard this one before as well, so if you want to this, please go right ahead. I'm so crazy, I plan to vote for Kefalfer again this November. Uh, first is in Birmingham. I if you want to about this. Ooh. Please go right ahead. Nice. Worrying. We're liberal on the issue. Uh, campaign. And this is different too, because if you click on this, it shows you like a much more zoomed in version of it and RD support breakdown, MPP support breakdown. Hold a poll, uh, which is pretty intense. So to get MPP, we're gonna go this one. Thank you very much. Um, so that's all done. So now you have to do it through here, which is not bad. Which I think they had to integrate the mod, the sub mod for this. Um, Senate previous presidential elections. Oh wow, we can see what happened in the last election. Henry Jackson did not do well. Oh my God, you can see all the way back here. Kefalfer, Chandler. Ike versus Martin. Five faithless electors. Oh wow, 48. T Robert Taft, wow. 44, Jesus, what? It's all red up here. In the solid south. Farley versus Dewey. And 44, Jesus. In 1940, Hopkins versus Dewey. Dewey barely won, then he really won. And wow, holy crap. Well, popularities. It's high middling, so we're probably going to get these guys anyways. No senators up for election. Wait. This state has no senators up for election. Interesting. Oh, they're campaigning up there, huh? Well. That's uh, that's interesting seeing all this stuff here. California polling results, MPP. Well, let's campaign there. Let's see what that's like. Um, oh, she bears a successor. That's interesting. Got a protest in Birmingham. If you're about that one, please go ahead. Even more worrying. Conservative. Any question of geography? Pandit never goes to Washington. 
Uh, let's see if this is any different. Yeah. President Nixon met with Pro Indian Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru at the White House today. The meeting with the first between Nixon and Nehru was the first stop on the Prime Minister's visit to the United States. Soon to be followed by multiple stops in Washington, Virginia, and New York. The Oval Office, President Nixon reaffirmed America's commitment to deepening America's political and economic ties to India. India is a vast nation, blessed with multitudes of resources and a rising population. It is the belief of this administration that the United States of America would be foolish if we did not embrace a republic and all the opportunities that it offers to the world. From the President's remarks, Prime Minister Nehru returned with a cordial cordiality of his own. People of India are on the verge of great success in the fields of economics, societal progress, and national development. We wish you the success to join hands in the free world, and I would like to thank the President for his efforts to bring your nations closer together. What's next? Hamburgers in Bombay? Just maybe. Um, we're still recruiting stuff. Oh, we still need it. I don't know nothing happened here. Let's go down here. Yes. And... Yes. And it's a question of geography. Mrs. Denon said, why is there a big empty space on the map? The eighth grade teacher looked down toward the big map that the young girl was pointing to, and in the large gray space in Eurasia that Miss Denson remembered that being colored red for the Soviet Union when she was in school 30 years before, but now labeled Russian anarchy. If you look at the, in, in an atlas, cartographers would have tried to outline the biggest warlord groups there were, but that changed every year, sometimes over a week as a group would rise in power and another decline. She didn't envy that thankless, never ending job. Oh, Mayor, that is where Russia used to be, Miss Denison replied. Uh, Denson, not Denison, but Denson. Why isn't there a Russia anymore, Mary asked. It's complicated, Miss Denson replied before flipping open her book to continue talking about the curriculum mandated discussion of Manifest Destiny. But isn't that history and we are a history class, Mary asked again? Miss Denison replied, or sighed. Okay, short version, from what I know, the Germans defeated the Soviet Union in the war, but didn't take over the whole country, leaving the rest to be fought over. Some were communists like in the old Soviet Union, while others wanted to bring back the old empire, and some others wanted to be democratic like us here in the America, she said. Now you can turn to, why well, can't they just all get together and beat up the Germans, Andrew asked. I bet my dad would join the army and kick Germany's butt again. Andrew, that's not a good word to use, Miss Denson admonished. But by now the whole class was talking, and more appropriately yelling about their how dad, brother, or themselves would work with the United Russia to beat up Germany again, totally derailing the class. Miss Denson sighed, but and the bell rang a moment later, hopefully ending the talk about the sad sets of Russia for now. The class dismissed as we will continue working on destroying uh, Japanese influence. A tale of two cities. The Olympic Committee was a far more brutal affair than what most people believe. The entire world battled for their chance in the spotlight for just a pair of weeks. But of course, most of the competitors were merely fluff, for the two contenders had already been narrowed down to two Detroit or Mich Mexico City. It was a final decision, and both of the champions were here to represent it. And the American corner laid car manufacturer giant and governor of Michigan, Go George Romney. And on the Mexican corner laid none other than the president himself, Lopez Mateos. Mr. President, it's a pleasure to meet you here. Romney greeted his Mexican rival with a firm handshake. Mateos, his translator, was kind enough to begin his work as best he could. Perhaps, Governor R Romney, I've heard a lot about you these past few days. It would be best to say I've heard quite a, few, a lot about Detroit, actually. The president joked with his emblematic white, wide white smile plastered on his face. So Romney seemed a little less thrilled about it. I've heard a lot of quite about Mexico City as well. If I'm honest, I've heard quite the troubling things. Are you sure the Olympics being held there will be safe for the athletes? I heard about the outfit... Romney tried his best to explain himself, but the translator didn't let him finish before filling in Mateos with what had been said. Without the jovial face, the president shifted into the opposite one. A second later, every head in the back room turned to see the source of the lot of shouting that heard in the last few days. Romney, Mateos, and the translators threw flurries of insults at the opposite party never fully understood, as if they couldn't run out of breath. It took well over a minute before both men tired of not getting what the other had said and walked away with smoke leaving through his ears. Gentlemen, you can't fight in here, as we are still trying to help these guys out down here as well. Um, but we're enjoying ourselves because we love blowing up the Japanese soldiers. The Germans by arrested. Um, I think I read this one earlier before. Yeah, if you want to read this one, please go right ahead. That's one that's Nazi to worry about, of course. So we're going to keep going down this way. And now we can do the crackdown on the movement and veto the Civil Rights Act, which will make it more difficult to get Wallace. Actually, you can't even get Wallace that way. So we're going to go to the Kennedy plan and get the Civil Rights Act. So. Um, I don't know if I read this. I'm sure I read this one before, but what the heck is the matter with Kennedy? It isn't a question we mean, it's a lack of discretion. The goddamn brat won't talk, stop talking about the blacks and it's riling people up. Well, he's having all of these meetings with the Jew reporters and these activist troublemakers. He's coming to, try, coming to us trying to, you know, rope us into the whole business. Well, we ain't falling for it. We won't slow the reputation. We can't get him to stop talking. We'll use him as an example of what happens when you ignore coalition unity tomorrow. Well, now we're putting Kennedy in the charge of the whole civil rights mess. Let's see how the press reacts when the progressive golden boy alienates the Republicans and those stupid Democrats can't pass a goddamn bill through Congress. Let's watch Kennedy hang himself with his own gosh darn rope. I'm not super concerned about this. As long as we keep pushing and trying, I mean, we'll be, we'll be fine. I'm not concerned. Um, what is this? Ah, olive branch from GDP growth. Yes, please. Yes, sir. Increase liquid reserves. Oh, yes. And then hand out loans. Oh, you bet we will. We get a little more debt, but you know what? I want more growth. Hey, that's looking way better than before. Growth is not great, but... I might actually get rid of some of these ships, because as much as I want the ships, we don't need all these ships. Um, this is probably going to be a bad idea, but I'm going to get rid of the subs. That costs money. Let's see what happens. It doesn't help us that much, but you know what? Do we need subs here in America? Probably. <laughs> just, just probably, you know. It is what it is. Keep helping defending and attacking, and this is good for our army experience, but not the other America. 
Um, I think I read this one before as well. America's biggest misconception debunked. A man with a plan. Oh. Uh, Michigan has seen plenty of men with big ideas come and go. As a bastion of the mighty American automobile industry, the state had a natural attraction for men with dreams of changing the world, deterred by the power of the labor unions or the big three automobile companies. Many of these men have failed and remained in the obscurity. George Romney was not one of these men. The president of the American Motors Corporation, Romney has saved the moribund company through economic economizing an emboldened strategy of focusing on the sales of compact cars in contrast to the gas guzzling dinosaurs of the big three, not content with his rescuing of the company. Romney continues ventures into Michigan politics as head of the Citizens Crusade. Romney's allies had managed to challenge the RDC monopoly in Michigan. The efforts for the state constitution convention and rewriting the state's governing documents to be more efficient and protective of citizens' rights. This effort had attracted support of many in Michigan, including the MPP, even, even as it challenged established powers of the state. In spite of his clash with the RDC in entering politics, Romney had no interest in joining the NPP. The Michigan branch of the pact was filled with birchers whose anti-establishment radicalism and bigotry repelled the upsetting Mormon. Romney had no time for extremism in his approach to problems and said searching for a consensus approach that would actually solve problems. Let's all talk about cooperative, uh, competitive capitalism. Wanna help out? It's fine with me too. Um, anything here interesting? Skirmisher, probing attack, air assault, it's not bad, camouflage. Eh. Yeah, we'll go right. I think our planes here. Did we not send them planes? Did I never send them planes? Oh, snicky. They never sent them. No wonder we're not doing that well. Well, where, where are we? There we are. It's pretty positive that we did. Pause it up. They did nice. Oh, do you not have. Huh. That's weird. Calamitous campaign. Huh? We are still running for the MPP. I'm still failing here. Let's see what happens. There we go. First meeting. Oh, and Phyllis Stewart, Schiff, Schaff, Schaffley, a senior member of the N uh, National Federation of Republican Women, went to meet with the President Richard Milhouse Nixon, effectively the most senior grandee of her party. She expected a frank and respectful discussion, but for some reason, the meeting was completely unsatisfactory. Perhaps the fact that the delegation <clears throat> had, had it as its aim to attempt to convince the President not to bother the proxy wars of Malaya and the Philippines when the real concern was domestic communism and fascist infiltration. Unbeknownst to Schlafy, 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 at the time, Senator Barry Goldwater made such points to Nixon's face recently. Since Nixon already hated the senator from Arizona, it made sense that he would outright dismiss people, especially women, that repeated Goldwater's words. It could just well have been Nixon's nature. The president was distracted and indifferent to anything that any of the women said. He could not open his own mouth without saying something ungentlemanly and dismissive. Look at she looking at Shafi. All he had to say in response to her word was, What's an attractive woman like you doing wasting your time out here? The other women looked at each other with no small amount of disgust. Shafi was not as free and easy with her reactions as her colleagues were. She knew she had a God-given duty to pay due respect to the President of the United States, but that did not stop her sharing her disgust in the quiet of her own mind. Morning, Monday morning nuke. Kuplin was affirmatively sticking his hand around his satchel, passed by notebooks and coins, a comb, and a photo of his mom before finally reaching his intended destination, his ID card. Taking it out, he hands it immediately to the man in front of him, a U.S. Army soldier. After taking a glance at his car, the soldier handed it back to him and said, very well, you can carry on. Kuplin uh, placed it back inside his bag and walked past the soldier without replying. He gets pulled aside about once every week on his way to work. With how few people there are in Nuke, you think soldiers will come in to recognize who is and what his face looks like. He doesn't mind it much, however. The Americans tend to keep themselves much more than the Danes did anyway, so he wishes he didn't make him late for work. The come eats a little longer now. How are we doing? Gomez guys, we're doing a good amount of damage here. I'll give you that too. Here, just help him out. Uh, four, three divisions. What happens if you attack, attack there? There you go. Go here too. Stagnation in the Senate. The Civil Rights Act simply means it's another means. Uh, that it's another effort by the part of the president to dominate the country by force of put put into effect these uncalled for and the darnable proposals he's recommended under the guise of so-called civil rights. And I tell you, the American people from one side of the, uh, to the other had better wake up and oppose such a program. And if they don't, the next thing will be totalitarian state in the United States. I have to remove any sort of Civil rights legisl legislation to the Senate have yet been met res with resistance from conservatives within the coalition. This time, however, the filibusters and angry uppers are delivered to a room of a very different atmosphere. With popular support for the bill only growing, once staunch, once staunch supporters or once staunch opponents are beginning to waver, and some MPP senators have even approached us in secret to give their support for the bill. Many experts are not predicting that the bill is now a very real chance to pass in the Senate, especially with VP Kennedy's authorship. Joe Jensen, hurry up with the deals in the Civil Rights Act.
The dude did it. The god darn son of a gun. Someone got a bill through Congress. Who knows what the heck he did to get Strom Thurmond to stand down, but the thing is going to, floor, to a floor vote and is expected to pass. All the papers are celebrating the brass of some kind of national hero while our entire electoral strategy is going up its flames. How the Democrats are threatened to split while the dudes in New England are trying to draft Kennedy for 64. The whole thing is wrong. The whole thing is wrong. We're going on the wrong path all because uh, the smug, stupid son of a gun wanted his face in the papers. What a total uh, blue perfect butt. Or booty. Ah. There's all, all the progressives, the nationalists, Democrats. So basically, MPPs, nationalists versus progressives. Um, yeah, it's definitely more than enough. 20, 26 plus 34 is usually over 50. Not always, but usually over 50. We have five research slots. What do we do? Do we always have five research slots? I don't always remember having five research slots. Don't get me wrong. I'll take it and we'll keep it and love it forever. But, uh, okay. Here. Sub, sub, why not? Airsoft companies. What is this? Special Forces Defense Soft Attack. Ooh, that's different. More organization recovery rate versus defense and soft attack. Um, breakthrough and heart attack. Are these mutually exclusive? Probably not, so. Very nice. Go up there. Conversation for the street. Oh, crap. I forget which one. Uh. Support the RDs. Um. Sounds like a comedy load of bulls is probably the way we want to go. I always forget this. I'm, gl I'm glad that at this point uh, in Tino's life. Um, that it actually gives us like options sh sharing with us what each option does. We're trying to support the Democratic Party and the Republican, Republican Party. Sounds like a comedy load of bull, probably. Yeah. Oh, also, maybe there's more to this down here, too. Um, the image of the progressives. Yeah, we're okay for now. There you go. Nice. See what you can do. And we have a cup of mint tea here as well to keep us nice and uh, warm. Even though we should probably take this opportunity to go right there. Um, transfer plans would be nice. Auto saving. Of course it's you know. It's only May. Think about you know. It, it, it doesn't, the game runs quite slowly in all honesty. The mod does. Because it's just a process so much. I'm out of there. Because why not? There you go. A solid campaign, very nice. As to be expected. So what is this one? Republicans interaction. This campaign in the very tip of New England. Actually, you just go here and do that. Senator's descent. Um I think I read this one before. If you're worried about this, please go right ahead. A rising star. I won't read every single one, but I'll read a lot of them. So. Operation success, great. And poverty's getting better too, so. That's always nice. Pro American sentiment. Palazar. Garrison, South Africa. Train with them, sure. Ninety-seven percent. We should be able to do a kingdom of the part two. Yeah, especially once we want to get Italy in the OFN as well. There you go. Media, media slams. Nixon. If you about this, please go ahead. They got it out from. I mean, we always read that. We always read this one before, so nice. Very nice. The chronic, chronicle from the east. Um, dear mom and dad, I'm alive, or at least I was when I wrote this letter, in good shape. We're currently camped down in Tuva, and I'm glad that means I've successfully trucked to the Russian Far East. Well, I'd love to tell you about it in person. A letter will also suffice for now. Kamchatka turned out to be run by the remnants of the Red Navy. Its sailors were quite friendly, and their leader was even kind enough to grant me a boat to Magadan. Unfortunately, leaving forced to resort to piracy to make ends meet, given the region's desolate conditions, Magadan, in comparison, was fairly well off. Its people look adjusted to their harsh conditions, and their leader, Makovsky, seems like a nice guy. Across the border, Yakutsk, a republic was dominated by mining companies, and while peaceful, it was sparsely populated. It was here where I hired Zoya, an experienced sniper, as a guide to help me on my journey, crossing into a mirror. I entered into a territory ruled by thugs and murderers, where violence and brutality were common and unrestrained. Counting myself lucky to avoid injury, we crossed into Chita, a territory ruled uh, by forces that seem to think the Russian Civil War still isn't over, with the Tsar from Australia at its head. Finally, we cross in Baratia, a land of idealistic revolutionaries fighting against the last tyrannical remnants of the Soviet Union in Irkutsk, a paranoid city which supported me into Tuva, now run by the remnants of the Red Army. While I still have ways to go before I can get back home, Russia is a fascinating land, and I hope with Zoya by my side, I can traverse it all with me luck, guys, and I hope, hope we'll see you soon. Love, Steve.
Oh, Steve, what a adventurous little guy. We all love Steve here. We better all love Steve. Christian Autumn. Nice. Those are updated. Silver Rod Zagnat, 62 passes. will build that many senators knew it would bring much needed equality to the United States, a nation who had strived for the concept since the Declaration of Independence was signed. Historically, African Americans had a little hope from the government that would fight for freedom. Even the 15th Amendment only gave blacks the right to vote on paper. There's no way to enforce the policy, and over town, the southern states exploited loopholes in order to maintain the status quo of the land. Poll taxes literally tests. The infamous grandfather clause also changed when the senators voted in favor of passing the bill. Desegregation is for joy, southern politicians foamed at the mouth. This act uh, sternly outlaws discrimination based on sex or uh, race, color, religion, sex, or national origin. Unequal voting requirements were abolished. Schools, business, and other public accommodations were officially desegregated. African Americans essentially gained the right to go to any school, work for any business, and attend any public facility that they chose. As a whole, African Americans have political power that the race had never seen before. And it's only the first step towards full desegregation. But not all was well in the South. Immediately, Southern voters flocked to the MPP and Nationalist Caucus and hoped that the bill would be reversed, as society returned to normal. Many Southerners despised this blatant attack on their livelihoods, and with the support from the Southern politicians, they had the power to physically defeat segregation. Not only did the bill uh, grant much need to reform, but it also caused division in the U.S. not seen since the Civil War. May I remind you the federal government overrides the state? All right. The Southern Democrats announced allegiance to the MPP. Well, we got that done. Morning, Washington. Oh, the president was in a rare mood as the sun came up across the Tata Basin. He enjoyed a full night's sleep for the first time in a long time. Hateman passed him a memo from the very promising poll coming out of Ohio. The headline of the Washington Post read, UMAJF declares a victory in Malaya and came with some very nice pictures of rebels raising a flag. Nixon liked that most of all. It was a kind of striking visual imagery that would stay in voters' heads long after they forgot where Malaya was or why it was important. Nixon leaned against a pillar in the residence and took a bite of his breakfast, cottage cheese, and grapefruit drizzled in ketchup. Ugh. He savored its milky taste. Not even kidding, it could ruin his mood. Sure, the brow was probably even now. Talking to some god darn liberal. The reporter of the Boston Globe or New York Times. He bet Soulsberger's boys were trying to find some way to pin this victory on the Golden Boys so they could challenge Nixon in 64. At the end of the day, though, Nixon was president. He was the one who gave the Japanese the black guy. He was the one who ended a year's long struggle in the Pacific and gave America a strategic ally. All the pictures in the paper were his doing him alone. So long as America kept winning abroad, his election, re election, would be a breeze. The president stood for a few moments longer, letting himself imagine all the good press he would get. He was determined to relish this moment for as long as possible. Nixon now more than ever. Nice. Uh, the domino's fallen, but not quite to our side yet. But man, man. It isn't quite open to a partnership as a Razaki, so a bit of nudging by the CIA might be in our interest, if so we wish. Radio waves. Can you pay? The living room would fill with static, flooding the eardrums of Bobby Cherry. The room was practically pitch black, save the dust illuminated by the light peeking through the shutters covering the windows. Sitting alone in his worn leather armchair with the radio and sh dry shot glass sitting on his chair side table, Cherry overheard a collection of words break through the static, which caused mass protests across the city. It's a effing miracle he got where those rats agree with him. If Nixon had grew a uh, god darn spine, we Kennedy's fall tall. Cherry had been listening to the South all night, all of its anger, all the excesses of those who th so thoroughly violated America. What's more, I knew he wasn't alone. He could just picture the families gathered around their radio sets, crying as they listened to the fate of America be decided but without their word, without their input. Without their say to what would happen to their livelihoods, what would happen to their cultures they fought so hard to preserve. What's more, that why Kennedy thought he could pull this kind of thing and get away with it was beyond Cherry. Somebody Kennedy was going to pay for what he'd done, though what was scared Cherry the most was that the president was far from done. Cherry turned the dial on the radio, and his waves of static oh, withered away into nothing. Then Cherry was alone in his room. Not even with the static to calm his nerves, and nothing but his thoughts to keep him company. It took him less than a minute to organize his evening musings into a plan, one that would forever put the final nail in the coffin of Northern tyranny. Kennedy, of course, will pay. A crack in the facade. The National Security Council had been gathered by the order of the President, and by recommendation of the Treasurer Secretary McNamara. Now, Bob, you told me that this isn't just about Madagascar blockade. It better not be. You told me there'd be no hang-ups on that issue. Not at all, Mr. President. McNamara shifted slightly in his seat. The director of Central Intelligence actually asked me to have you convene this council. He glanced at the director who held a pipe up to his lip. His mouth curled in a glib smile. Get on with it, then, the president urged. With a puff of smoke, he leaned on it and began. Mr. President, we have contacts high up within the German colonial administration of Madagascar. We have total reason to believe that they have some misgivings about their loyalties to Berlin. With the weakening of the German Empire, with Hitler becoming increasingly ill, it's been apparent that a conflict may break out on the island sooner rather than later. We have word the rebels are planning to make their own move soon, and the local government is divided. Nixon shrugged. Who are these contacts? Can we be sure of their sincerity? McNamara pushed his glasses further up his nose. For a dramatic effect, the director popped again from his pipe. Mr. President, our contact is Rex Commissar, Emile Maurice. Nixon seemed stunned for a moment. 
moment, but collected himself quickly. My God, that's great. And is a direct line of Hitler? The director nodded, and Maurice is one of Hitler's oldest confidants. The relationship has been strained as of late, which is partly why he wants out, and his word we think is good. Nixon nodded in silence for several months before continuing. Well, darn it, you keep me updated on this. If I find any way to breach the bastion, you let me know immediately. Let's see if we can make a dent in the Einheit's Pact. Oh, also, I forgot this, too. It's a lot of spending, a lot of political power, but that's okay. More growth. Invest in India. Ooh. New expansions to the dockets of Cotton India, financed by Wells Fargo Bank and TIAA, Bellas Furnaces, courtesy of engineers from Bethlehem Steel to kickstart a new iron industry in Karnataka. Agreements from companies such as Fruit of the Loom, Wool Reich, and Bol Brooks Brothers to source more cotton from fields in Gujarat and Andhra Pradesh. All these developments and more are filling financial papers across the country. It seems that every American company was enough ca with enough capital is putting money into Indian power projects. The state of the Indian U.S. relations is at an all time high, and as a result, investors see incredible opportunities in the Republic of India. Of course, we'll get new jobs and boosted incomes while American companies will reap new profits, and American consumers will be able to buy new cheap goods. It's a win win. Tell me more about those mythical investments in India. Now, looking at this, if we just deleted the entire Navy, we'd be okay, but still. What if we did nuclear expenditures, huh? Oil processing? Nice. And now it is finally August, my friends. August, August, August. Can't go quite here yet. Helicopters, ship stuff. Sure, battleships. We love battleships. Here, we'll grab this as well. Um, there is a special campaign, uninspired campaign that sucks in search of a champion, which I've definitely read before. Um, you know what? Campaign here too. And the marks are roughly one percent. Uh, who will speak for the progressives? I think I read this before. As we go into this, please go right ahead. Who will speak for the progressives? Not me. Not right now. Maybe later. Eh, it's not too bad. Um, we've, we got rid of the subs we said earlier, but still. I don't want to eliminate too many of these guys. Many leaders. Mahad Bostaman was um, disappointed. Also, if you don't want to read about this with the FBI pounds, please go ahead. Theory, cheers to Hoover's and his boys. He was disappointed that Malay had refused to trust put his trust in him after the departure of Chin Peng and the people become disillusioned with him and Chin's style of leadership. Also cut him to the quick that only the most loyal, ideologically stubborn members of the old guard of the UMAJF had remained with him and all of the moderate and conservative come lately's had gone over to Abdul Razak Hussein. It said that to Razak, whose response was simple and surprisingly sympathetic. I can understand that, Ahmad. I had been in your shoes, had I been in your shoes, I'm fairly sure I had, had the same attitude. Is there anything you might want me to keep in mind? Ahmad nodded, and I do. Now, let's be very real clear here, Razak. I don't hate you, and I'm not particularly angry. I know that you and I share all one, all one important goal, despite our differences. You, I, Malayans, all, we want the pain to go away. We want the Japanese legacy scrubbed out. We want the trauma and pain to follow them into the sunset. And that you've got my good wishes and whatever support I can give without selling my own beliefs and objectives. Razak indicated his agreement as Ahmad continued. But there's one thing I'm deeply concerned about, Razak. I heard strange rumors about, about the Americans intervening on your behalf in the election. Allah alone knows the reason. I don't hold this against you. Far from it, you and I both know. How hard it is to understand the logic of these Yankees, but I have to ask one thing of you. Please, Razak, don't trade one Papa Master for another. Keep Malaysia free. Don't let the Americans do to us what the Japanese scum did. Razak nodded. I'll keep that in mind, Ahmad. Thank you for everything. With that, the two parted as friends. Also, can we get... Yes. Nice. Good, good, good. I was trying to keep boosting our own popularity down there. And I'll keep doing what we're doing. Less than a billion deficits, not bad. The debt GDP ratio, 78.4%, not bad. Uh, we can do temp tax hike for more of this. It's gonna hurt ourselves a little bit. Military austerity. Do we need any of that stuff? Military spending factor? I mean, we're not spending that much on the military, honestly. Well, if we do that, we get surplus. Hurts our growth a little bit, but you know, whatever. It doesn't give us that much money in all honesty, but you know, oh well. We do have civilian austerity, which we won't do because that's gonna really hurt needed consumer goods and political power and stuff like that. So, balls are updated. Very cool. Very good. Uh, we're successful. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. As we hold the election, special weapons, nice, nice, nice. There we go. Sure. Intelligence, I don't want to hurt any of these groups. Um, more trade between us, maybe? I don't know. I do like that this stuff is brand new down here, too. Special forces would be nice. Yes. Um... Engineer soft attack? Sure, why not? Why not? We got we got the research slots for it, so we should. As we have to take a sip of more tea. As we're just trying to blitz through all this up here too. It's pretty nice. Give them more arms. They started something beautiful. If you're in this game, please go right ahead. More growth, yes please. Internal investigation, if you're with that, please go right ahead. It's getting complicated, I'd say.
care about the poor. So I can't be nice. Very, very nice. Um, I always do these ones because this is the most beneficial thing to us. We can do this stuff, but I kind of don't really care too much. You know, this is kind of different. Breaking the pariah state is a little bit different. Two presidents. There were many cameras. They're always they they're always were with Nixon. He stood side by side with Brazilian President Enrique Teixeira a lot. I am placed lightly on the man's back as the press took the photos. As a symbol of American commitment to Brazil, of the unshakable resolve between the two giants of the hemisphere, it would make a great image for the campaign in '64, of course. Mr. President said a lot in a slow, still to the voice of a military man attempting to navigate an American press conference. I greatly appreciate your hospitality inviting me here for the opportunity to discuss the relationship between the two states. We have much to discuss about your bases in Brazil, the payments. There were camera snaps. Nixon snapped mildly, did not fade, but no longer reached his eyes. His hands fell away. Oh, we'll of course discuss many, many things about. I'm glad to be in a friendly country with a friendly leader. I look forward to speaking to your American Congress, but I must say that the current payments you provide for your bases are simply not, almost imperceptibly. Nixon's warm smile calcified. Then, in a flash, H.R. Haldeman was between the president and the press, pushing the assembled crowd out of the door so the two men could talk in private about this issue of security. I was infected with a version, a believable lie, even though a lot did not bring up the bases again. Nixon spent the remainder of the meetings doing. When it came time for a lot to leave, it was, it was cold Haldeman, not the president, who escorted him out. This is something he said. Bring out the tinderbox. Um, if you want to read this, please go right ahead. I think I read this one before, but if not, you can read it, read it right there. So, uh, bring the tinderbox, the Malayan rebellion. So, if you read this as well, please go ahead to. And there's that one too. The vanguard of freedom. A lot on the hill. There's a loud banging and then booming a voice of a sergeant in arms of the House of, U.S. House of Representatives. That Mr. Speaker, the President of the United States of Brazil. Senators and representatives rose from their chairs and applauded as Enrique Lott and the sergeant walked down the center aisle of the House chamber. Representative Symington reached out, vigorously, reached out and vigorously shook the man's hand. And Senator Mike Mansfield pushed his way past two junior representatives to make himself seen by the stiff foreign president. Applause echoed throughout the chamber until Lott reached a rostrum. It gazed out across the body with the expression of forced appreciation and began a speech 20 years ago. The world was in chaos. Empire was built on autocracy and hate marched forth to conquer and ravage any that would not bend to their wills. There, the United States and Brazil first fought alongside each other in the name of liberty, said Lot in a tight voice. We could not prevent the tragedies that claim millions of lives, but we could stop them from happening again. And on it went. The Americans nodded dutifully. They pretended not, pretended not to notice as Lot raced to his lines in an accented monotone while mere recitation than a speech. They were silent in the correct times and applied at the roaring rhetoric and truth of the carefully constructed sentences and prose mattered little to the simple body. What mattered more was that Lot himself was there for those senators and representatives on foreign relations committees. For those overseeing weapons sales, the president's trip to the capital was a sign that Brazil was on America's side against fascism. The congressmen and senators would do what they could to reward the support. It's amazing what a joint session of Congress can achieve. Of course, Vanguard of Freedom. Uh, friends in the Philippines. So there's this one too, if you like to read this one. I sound spring, man is part of nature and the war against nature is a war against himself. For the future. Um, I might have read this one too before so we're in this go ahead. And rivalries in the IAF. And the fighting Filipinos. And strike the match, of course, too. And probably crack in the steel curtain. Well, our agents of the field have successfully made contact with elements of the Indonesian army in Sumatra affiliated with the Corpora Colonels, a rival faction against a dominant peta clique of generals dictating military protocol from Java. After managing to secure trust with the Corpora Colonels, we were able to make contact directly with the group's leadership themselves, among them a Colonel Ahmad Hussein. Colonel Hussein had expressed a growing resentment among his men due to the lackluster for resources he had been provided by the government to perform his duties, and began to seek out funding to accomplish our task. After discussing the possibility of receiving American capital, among other things, to invest in his forces, the Colonel had demonstrated a willingness to act upon his dissatisfaction against Jakarta as long as we provide better benefits and persuade him. Uh, such an exploit could prove invaluable in undermining the unity of the Indonesian army and weaken the regime's hold upon the region. As your behest, Mr. President, we could begin the process of further negotiation. Excellent. Let's negotiate then. What are the priorities? Excellent. Let's negotiate. Mateo's wild ride. It was a cold and dreary January morning in Mexico City, and Governor Romney led the best, auto America, best American automakers. Which, we're only in November when we got this, but the simple t goal is to talk with Mexican businessmen and politicians alike in an automobile convention. It was simple enough until the Mexican president appeared, but Brown didn't cower in such cases, he attacked. Mr. President, it's a pleasure to see you again, Romney declared warmly, as though their meeting in the Olympic Committee had been pleasant. I apologize for all that I said last time. It was never my intention to insult this beautiful city. Governor Romney, Mateo's greeted with the slightest of a raised up brow. He thought the governor would have slithered into the crowd instead of facing him head on, regardless, it was hard to remain man of the man. In no small part because he didn't want to know what most of the shouting of the last time ever meant. I also thought that tra today's translator was a new one. Please, so there's no need to apologize so much, I understand. Sometimes tensions run high in such places. I myself could feel like a vein 
was about to burst while at the committee. Hopefully Mexico City is more relaxing. It had been a splendid visit so far, and I can only hope that it gets better in the coming days, Romney said before. The conversation was interrupted by a Mexican man who had no interest in him at all. He whispered something into the Mateos before vanishing in the next second. I have an idea for that. I just learned that Chrysler bought a car that can run on the tequila. Would you like to see it with me? Mateo asked with a contagious smile. That doesn't sound like a bad idea after all. It was all Romney had to say before the pair made a beeline for the car. The wonders of the automobile. As, um, over here, uh, the Malayan Rebellion uh, auto completed, as well as the Vanguard Freedom, which is pretty nice. So still doing that one, but choices. The picture Joseph painted was a grim one. With both north and western portions of the island are almost independent in practice, if not an only name, communications have been cut aside from our informants, informants and infiltrators, and they've been routed out by the dozens. Soon enough, we'll know, abs know absolutely nothing about the situation there. Uh, he paused for a moment, sizing up the expression of Moore's face. He couldn't give the officer any ground, though, and simply sat silent, waiting for the other men to continue speaking. The West is entirely controlled by a German detachment, completely separated by, from Emil's faction. They aren't playing with the Grax Commissar anymore, and this faction seems to be treating the natives even worse than their German rivals. North has been swallowed up by an entirely different faction. Those empathetic with Gabriel's nationalism and cross were truly free, free at Madagascar. They'd be far more sympathetic to us, but these are people that have been enslaved ever since 1933. They'd be hesitant to sign off on anything that would undermine their independence, which leaves us with only with the East, unfortunately. Uh, it wasn't a disaster. In fact, it was probably the best scenario more could have ever hope for, but it did, it did change the fact that it was a crappy one. We have to fight tooth and nail to claw forces across Madagascar. These were his last few relatively peaceful days, more realized. Soon his days would be filled with reports of death tolls, battle reviews, plans, and war management. Thank you, Yosef. Have no fear. Even if we had one hundredth of the island, they couldn't stop us. That'll be all. Thank you. With a sharp salute and a sharper march, Yosef left more alone in his office. He just lied through his teeth, but it was necessary. He wouldn't have soldiers believing in a lost cause, and if the worst comes to worst, we always hit the Pentagon like crabs in a boiling pot. And which we're waiting for that as well, but hey, the country's doing better overall. Also, I'll show you we didn't anything special but the breaking point. Well, uh, Emil Maurice's particularly depressive idiosyncrasies meant that the GMA's HQ at Toa Mancina had never been a happy place, even those by those standards. The crushing weight of the city's loss had truly created an atmosphere to spare the temporary government residence just outside the city. A former military household requisition when its occupant deserted to military forces. The French looking building was bustling with panicked staffers so loyal to Maurice who could only ponder the reverberating radio bulletins proudly announcing the list of GMA circle servants facing a firing squad at the former capital. The compound stank, courtesy of the gunpowder used to shoot suspected plague victims at the nearby hospital field hospital. And a small complimented only by that of the burning paper, the colonists classified documents, but Maurice could only t hardly take note of the stench. Amidst it all, Alex Commissar was chiefly concerned with finding the telephone landline which military maps indicated there was somewhere nearby. He had made sure that his staff was engaged in the futile task of reorganizing the irredeemably stupid who refused to desert into a force. Who refused to desert into a force capable of delaying the enemy. With the chief engineer of the colony, an SS sergeant, none the wise to his objectives, Maurice ordered him to hook up the telephone he had hurriedly salvaged from his tomato. To a Messina office, and then dismissed the man. Once he was gone, the man who had been once Adolf Hitler's best friend pulled out of the brown folio given to him by Admiral Moore. Hastily skewing through the files to the tune of a not so far off uh, <clears throat> uh, shooting, not so far off shooting of a plague victim, Maurice finds the number for the American's intermediary in Madagascar. While the faint thunder of artillery begins to creep in into the Rex Commissar's audible range, Maurice inputs the number in the rotary phone. His call is answered by a man who confirms his role as Moore's a middleman as for passwords exchange to Admiral Moore I and requesting immediate evacuation. And also, we did get 45 uh, senators in total. Um, kind of sp relatively split between these two, and they're actually, we have like no Republicans and quite a few Democrats, so that's interesting. And now we're probably going to get involved in Madagascar. Who doesn't love Madagascar? The South African plan involve itself in South Africa, support African intervention, communities in South Africa grow, protecting our interests. Uh, as we auto save as well, and South Africa. And now, my friends, we have the Dominican Republic, which is growing to be the largest thorn in our side in Latin America at large. The regime has found a niche in exporting its cancer, establishing closely knit networks of support with other fascist regimes. Trujillo's actions threatened to turn into a time bomb in the future that could hinder our position in the region. An opportunity to topple the dictators appeared within the collapse of the triumvirate. Our Cuban allies have been training the, in the organization known as the Caribbean Legion, a small anti-fascist army volunteers from across all of the Caribbean, and we will direct them against Trujillo. Um, so Chris supplies 80. We can prepare a landing youth force and insurrection. The number of legion brigades we can support is defined by supply. The inv invasion has been with supplies 20. Uh, it's currently equipped with two brigades. Deploy over five will drain supply faster after landing. Operational strength is 23. Prepare other landings. Um, let's just prepare an armored force. High Cuban, prepare the first expeditionary Cuban battalion. Helping hand. Um, what is this? Mobilized reserves. The supply will decrease by 10. More command power. Goes down by 10. 70. 
45 political power. We were stronger during the first week of the invasion. Organized logistical aid will become available after the invasion starts. Receive air support. Sure. I've never done this before, so. Operational strength is decreased by 10. Sleeper cells will destroy the rear lines of our enemy, and stronger sabotage decisions will become available after the invasion starts. Okay, well. Suck off 10 supply, which doesn't sound very good, but. Five, nice. Helping hand, you know, you told me six years ago that someday I'd be sitting in a nice luxurious. Oh, we're in this place, go ahead. Um, uh, invasion with a person, I would put the iron bars myself. I would have have believed you, Fidel. Fernando Gutierrez joked while he stretched out of his chair. He dressed more like an exaggerated American tourist than in, as a second command of Mexico's feared DFS. He even had with him a glass of muscle rum in one hand and a fan on the other. Ah, but I'm a man you put behind bars and then let go. So I told you the full context. You wouldn't have doubted me, replied Fidel Castro, dressed in his all of his drab fatigues. And smoking his usual cigar, he looked off into the warm sunrise which painted the sky in general pink. It was in that same direction that his dream as a student now lay again, the overthrow of the fascist Trujillo. Besides, we aren't talking about an invasion because technically Cuba isn't invading anywhere at all. Cuban soldiers aren't landing in the Dominican Republic. It just so happens that some men employed in the Cuban army will go on the free will. Well, still, Cuban soldiers on foreign soil sounds like a handful. Aren't you worried that you get half the Caribbean in a panic? Some people might be worried you're going to the top all the... Gutierrez cleared his throat for a traumatic effect. Oh, so respectable leaders in the region. Please, every newspaper will be focused on the Americans. Nobody even bother with us when they can spit on them, Fidel answered before taking a puff from a cigar. Let's hope the gringos don't try and throw you under the bus if things go badly. I'm sorry we couldn't be the ones helping you out, but right now our men are needed at home. Gutierrez looked dismayed at all. Dismayed at it all. You've done enough for me already, Fernando. Just pray for my men that it'll be enough. Gutierrez scoffed and Fidel returned to the cigar. The devil can pray. Maurice flees Madagascar's. Um... Let's see. The USS says Iowa's blue jackets had not been told why they, why they were supposed to land in what was technically German sovereignty territory. Sovereign territory. Soon, however, they got their answer. Who is this Nazi screwball? Huey Lundstrom, in spite of legitimately being unaware of the answer to the question, was already to pull the trigger on his M14 regardless. In front of him, a scrawny man with gray hair stood out, just desperate not to get shot, but not so much as to raise his hands, for he knew that, would, that he would live. Calm down, you moron. We are here for him. Lundstrom's superior officer, much of his own disappointment, had to stop any notions of shooting the man with a swastika armband and SS uniform. Mr. Uh, Maurice? It's time to go now. For the first time in years, Maurice was giddy with excitement. As he gleefully helped himself to the American's PT boat, which took him to the battleship USS Iowa, anchored just a few miles away, as the P Iowa sailed back to the OFN base at Cocos Island. Lundstrom was uh, put on guard duty at, at the signal's compartment. Soon after he got there, the sailor in charge of the decryptor handed him over a piece of paper. Give it to Captain Facton, will you? Having nothing better to do, Lundstrom got on his merry way, stopping along the junction between the officer's mess hall and the bridge. After checking nobody was around, Lundstrom quietly opened the decrypted transmission. His knowledge of the Indian Iraq is invaluable. Move him to a political asylum. So, invasion, minimum supply, current supplies. We need more supply. More supply, please. 85. We're not quite up there. Legion training forces become unavailable. Oh boy. We need more. Oh, maybe we should have too much supply now. Whoopsie. Asking uh, Scotland asks about buys ask buyers. Oh. Oh, uh, we can agree this. If you're going to this, please go right ahead. That was a disaster more. I thought he almost going to barely take his hands off his face. The sun had barely begun to crack over the horizon when he was raised uh, by the sound of a fist smashing against his front door. Eyes bloodshot, underlying by a thin layer of sleep, he had opened the same door to find Stolf, Moore's least favorite German traitor. It wouldn't do to, do to say that to his face, so he invited him to his house and fired up a pot of coffee for himself and Stolf. And while I poured out a mug for his turncoat, Stolf broke the news. Uh, Mr. Moore, sir, I wish you could have came under better circumstances. Oh, look at this. Command coordination, that's new. Wait, that's military spending? Oh! Um... <clears throat> Uh, I don't go into the effing preambles, just tell me what's on your mind. Um, Stoff took a sip of the dark brown liquid to clear his throat. It's begun. The garrison's been bombed, and both the rival German forces in the west and the natives to the north have moved in on us. We're being pushed back at all points. It's total chaos. Surprise has taken hold of the men. Tearing his head out of his hands, he threw the mug across the room, watching it smash into giblets upon the dining table. He should have seen this come. The sons were there, and he had taken notice, but he hadn't taken nearly enough action. We need to mobilize now. Crap, we should have mobilized last week, Moore shouted, smashing his fist upon the marble counter. I don't want to see another man or another soldier's face in the effing barracks in the city by poor anywhere within a effing a hundred miles of me. Every man said, well, I'll go effing get. I saw fled the Moore's Malagasy Manor, and Moore fled his kitchen to the small office on the bottom floor. He needed someone on the blind now who hoped that his secretary was still running the phone. He picked up the phone to Anthony's voice, thank F. 
Anthony, you need to contact the new man you can get your hands on in Washington. It's begun. We weren't prepared. Now, don't worry about it. He slammed the phone back down, folding his, hat, his head into his arms. He was dumb, stupid luck on the part of Moore's enemies. He hoped that luck wouldn't hold out. Madagascar now burns, but unfortunately, I think I've got to end it there. And we're going to continue going as fast as we can through this. Um, just to see what the Philip, uh, was it Philip Hart? The Philip, uh, prison is like. So it's going to take a while for us to get there, but we'll get there in the meantime. But, regardless, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we continue on with this campaign in Unfinished Business 3. Thanks for watching, and have a great rest of your day!